First for lunch, I'm using bacon. Deliciously seductive in Asani and great for adding flavor and texture to thrifty dishes because a little goes a long, long way. My favorite bacon is traditional cured Italian pancetta. Rich and strong in flavor, it brings extra depth to salads, stews, and soups. But a great cheaper alternative is streaky bacon, and it's what I'll be using for my thrifty lunch. Smoky bacon, onions, potatoes, sweet corn. It's amazing how cheap the ingredients are that go into this. Get your bacon and just cut into nice chunks. I want these nice bite-sized pieces. Smoky, chunky, and just absolutely delicious. It's almost like an American corn chowder. Potatoes give it starch, thickness. Sweet corn gives it that glossy, delicious flavor. A Couple of Baileys. They're always hanging around. If they're not in your cupboard, they're on someone's drive, so ask to borrow them. They are so powerful, and it goes brilliantly well with the onions and the bacon. Bay leaves in. A couple of potatoes. It's incredible how far you can stretch something out, especially when you bulk it with potatoes. Slice them and dice them. Nice and chunky. Soups are a fantastic way to use up leftover veg or meat that might otherwise go to waste. And if you make it in bulk, freeze it in individual portions and save on lunches throughout the week. So you can see already how hearty and robust the soup is. It's a delicious combination. Onions, bacon, potatoes, and now some fresh leeks. Open up the leek into four. Give that a nice wash. Leeks often have soil left in their tops, so it's important to clean them thoroughly. Start sweating that down. We haven't even got the corn in there yet, and already it's looking and smelling incredible. Add salt, but remember, you've got bacon in there, which is salty, so proceed with caution. Really important to sweat those potatoes off. I love getting that flavor from the smoky bacon in with the potatoes. Now, once the leek is sweated off, cream corn. A popular side dish in the States. Cream corn is made from fresh, frozen, or even tin corn, cooked with onion, butter, and cream, and can be bought ready-made. That starts to give the foundation to the soup. Half the cream corn, and the sweet corn. Then, your stock. Don't flood the soup. Just bring the stock to underneath the ingredients. You can always add. It's very difficult to take away. Homemade chicken stock is so cheap to make. Just boil up your roast chicken bones with a few fresh veg and freeze in batches for when you need it. Lighten the load with a touch of milk. That gives a really nice, bright color. Now bring that up to the ball. Turn it down and let it simmer for 12 to 15 minutes. As it cooks slowly, the starch thickens the soup, the bacon renders, and that leek onion starts the puree and the corn just shines. OK, next, we're going to make the American cheese biscuits. In the UK, they're known as scones, but in America, they're called biscuits. First, put plain flour into a sieve. Add baking powder and sift both into a bowl. Next, add some salt, pepper, and grated mature cheddar cheese. Mix the dry ingredients, then make a well in the center. Pour in double cream and gently combine with a wooden spoon. Turn your dough out onto a floured surface and knead for a few seconds only. If you overwork it, your cheese biscuits won't rise. Roll out your dough to about two centimeter thick and cut into four centimeter round biscuits. Place well apart on a lined baking sheet and leave to rest on the tray for about 10 minutes. Then brush the top of each biscuit with melted butter and bake for about 30 minutes at 160 degrees C in a preheated oven. When your cheese biscuits are well risen and a beautiful golden brown, remove. Deliciously Moorish, served hot or cold. Time to dole out my thrifty lunch. I always like to leave a soup to stand or rest. It looks richer, it gets rid of all the stock. I like to have two thirds ingredient, one third of the stock, so it looks like a nice, delicious, chunky soup. Into the bowl. Beautiful. Tin sweet corn, a leek, potato, and some streaky bacon. 
but it doesn't look like it's just come out of a store cupboard. That is proper hearty food. Served with my American-style cheese biscuits, this thrifty lunch may have been made on a shoestring, but without an ounce of compromise on freshness and flavour. The secret of a great hash brown are the potatoes. I prefer using really nice, waxy potatoes. They cook better, but more importantly, they hold themselves together. We're not going to slice the onion or the potatoes. We're actually going to grate them. The potatoes get really nice and crispy. I mean, seriously crispy. Now, the onion. That way you get that nice balance of that onion flavour running through every little shard of potato. Season with salt, pepper, olive oil, and cayenne. Give that a really good mix through. And then squeeze all that water out. And look at all that juice we squeezed out of there. Really important. The more liquid you remove, the crispier your hash browns will be. Nice large pan, put that on. Once the pan's hot, pour in a good glug of olive oil. That sound confirms how important it is to have your pan nice and hot. So it seals the grated potato and onion together. So take the spoon and just pat it down. What we're trying to do now is get it really nice and compact. Going round the outside of the pan with little flecks of butter, you just slip them down the back gently. And that gets the onions caramelised. Here's a great tip for turning your hash browns over quick and easy. Take a plate, place it on top, and just flip it over, and then slide it back in very quickly. You see the colour we've got on there now? Got that nice, crispy texture of the potato. I'm going to use the hash brown as a bed for my baked eggs. Crack in your eggs nice and gently. Just a little sprinkling of the cayenne to make the eggs a little bit spicy. Then into a preheated oven for six to eight minutes. Meanwhile, onto my bacon, and I'm giving it a classic American twist. Now, one thing I could never get my head around when I first started eating lots of American breakfast was the sweetness from the bacon. I've grown up to love that combination of smoky sweet flavors, and it's so easy. Pan on and simply heat olive oil, brown sugar, salt and pepper, and butter. Bacon in. And as it cooks, it becomes irresistibly caramelised and golden brown. Turn off the gas, and my glazed bacon is absolutely ready. Beautiful. Now, my hash browns and baked eggs are ready. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Just put your spatula underneath there, onto your plate. And that bacon sits beautifully on top of the baked eggs and that hash brown underneath. And you can see why the best breakfasts in the world are always in America. This is an all-American superhero of a breakfast. Eggs baked in hash browns with glazed bacon.